I'm with the great John Anik, who will be hosting the Hall of Fame ceremony tonight. This must be quite a lovely honor for you. It is. It's actually my ninth year doing it. And I remember when we were doing it at the UFC Fan Expo on a stage, and it lasted 15 minutes. Now we got all the bells and whistles. We're at T-Mobile Arena. Caroline Pierce is here. We're ready to go. We absolutely are. And your good friend, colleague, Daniel Cormier, of who you've known a long time and you've watched his journey, it's got to be pretty special for you to see him after all the emotion when it was announced, now get his moment here. Yeah, special is the right word. I think it's going to be emotional for all of us. I mean, even Khabib Nurmagomedov's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, was bawling his eyes out during rehearsal, right? So I do believe that this night triggers an emotion in a lot of these athletes that maybe they don't know exists. And certainly for me, uh, DC is one of my best friends. I mean, I talk to him every day. So to see him go in and get the adoration and the adulation from the MMA masses, uh, it's very special. I'm just, I'm excited to get through my first utterance of Daniel Cormier so I can get through the full body chills and, and move on with the rest. You know? And enjoy the rest of the show. How would you describe Daniel's career? I mean, now he's part of the broadcast team. He's one of the guys, he's with you, but you know, do you sometimes step back and say you are a two division world champion and sort of recognize what it is he's done in that sense? Yes, absolutely, you put it well. And I also like to remind him that he is one of the all time greats. You know, you don't hear a lot of people saying Daniel Cormier is the GOAT, right? And I understand that, but he's the first UFC fighter to win a light heavyweight title and then move up and win the heavyweight championship. And perhaps John Jones will realize that at some point in time, but he hasn't done it yet, you know? First guy to do it in those weight classes. That's a big deal to me. So I also think when you look at his heavyweight body of work in strike force, uh, I think that is criminally underappreciated. So for me, he's one of the top five or seven greatest mixed martial arts athletes of all time and uh, obviously has a lot of belts at home to prove it. So He does indeed. And of course, a word on Habib Nurmagomedov, undisputed, undefeated. He retired 29-0, and oh, you know, one of the few, if only, fighters to, to do so. It's crazy. My first night working for the UFC, January 20th, 2012, was the night he made his debut in Nashville, Tennessee. And even then, I remember Joe Silva saying, hey, keep an eye on this guy. I don't know exactly what the wig is called, but <laughs> this guy is for real. And uh, I think today was like the first time I finally was not starstruck around Khabib Nurmagomedov. He just has this presence, this aura, uh, this championship feel about him. Uh, you just get the sense that you're in the presence of greatness. And uh, obviously, he's headlining the class, and rightfully so. Absolutely, and of course here for UFC 276 as well. You must have had a bit of fun on the stage for the press conference just now. I mean, that's probably one of the most enjoyable ones I've witnessed for, for a while. It was great. I mean, Sean Strickland stole the show. I thought Max Holloway did a nice job in sort of ratcheting up the trash talk with Alexander Volkanovsky a little bit. You know, those guys were sort of rooted in respect all week, and then Max decided to turn the page on him a little bit. So I thought that was cool. But uh, yeah, of all the press conferences that I have been on stage for energy-wise, uh, I can't remember a more festive one than today. So. And just quick. I can't not pick your brain on these fights, being that you're here in front of him. We talk at Israel Adesanya and the amazing things that he's done, and he goes up against a new new blood yeah. in Jared Cannonier. And every time someone says, I'm different, I can get it done, do you think Jared Cannonier? has a way to get the victory. I think he has a lot of ways to win. You know, I'd be very curious to see him try to grapple a little bit and see if he can have some sort of physical strength advantage against Israel Adesanya. So I'm not going to sit here and tell your audience that Jared Cannonier is a live dog per se, because I've talked to Robert Whitaker after he fought Israel Adesanya and the frustration with the length and the whole package and the distance management. It's just a really hard puzzle to solve. And, and I do believe that Adesanya deserves the distinction as a four to one favorite. I think Cannoneer is going to have to be perfect Saturday night and maybe he will be. We'll see. Yeah, you never know. There's been a lot of belts changing hands recently. That's for sure. Co-main event. They go oh. again. The trilogy. Volkanovski, Max Holloway. Just that curious, and if you can share this, which way did you have the last fight? I thought Max won, you know. Um, perhaps I thought it was a little bit closer than Matt Serra or Dana White, but no, I thought Max Holloway did enough to win that fight. I think my big takeaway coming in is that Alexander Volkanovsky is a completely different guy than the guy that Holloway fought that second time. Now, Max has certainly improved appreciably as well, but Volkanovsky's taken his game to a whole nother, nother level. I mean, he was beating Max with you know, a partial skill set and his competitive spirit. Now he's the total package. So uh, it's going to be fascinating to see if Volk can get it done a third time. Absolutely. Lots to look forward to. We'll let you move on with all your interviews. Lovely Thank to see you. you as always. always Thank you. Always great to see you. Thank you.